Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering blocks, procs, and lambdas, and a couple of different forms they can take. It's going to be a pretty quick video, so let's go ahead and let's get started. What I have here is just a basic Ruby file. It's just a video.rb file, and I'm going to paste in a new line here just so I have something to keep things looking pretty. So first we're going to start with blocks. If you're not familiar, a block looks something like this. It's just a block of code. So in this case, what we're doing, we have an array, we call dot each on it. And then in here, if you want to look at it like this, you can sort of break it down, say, all right, so for each number, we want to put printing that number. And then if we go ahead and we run this, you'll see blocks prints because it's right here. And we see printing the number one, two, three, seven, five. I just put the seven in there so you could see this wasn't like, you know, printing in incrementing order or whatever. It's actually just going through each of the items in this array and doing this. Now, of course, you could take this and say my numbers equals this array and then call my numbers this, you know, get the same result. Another thing you might see is a block in def form. So you might have something like yield me baby. And in here, what we can do is we can have a couple of different puts. So we'll start with the puts on the method. Then we'll have that yield that we see in uh, Rails application files right? And what this does is it yields for the content in a Rails uh, application. So instead of the example I'm about to show you, where we can put like an interrupting cow in here, uh, and then we can, you know, call this. So if we run this, you'll see, uh, actually, what I want to do here is maybe just put a new line, oops, a new line right here. Something like that. And call this, there we go. You can see I'm the method prints, then it yields for whatever gets put in here, which in the case of a Rails app might be your home page or your sign-in page or whatever. And then after that, uh, interrupting cow is done, you can then see I'm the method again prints out. Uh, and then we can move on. So for our procs, uh, let me actually do this. We can do a procs, new line and puts the procs. So for our procs, these are gonna be similar. However, you're gonna notice up here with our uh, blocks, they were kind of like anonymous in a sense. Uh, we just uh, we just pass in a block in this case, or we just uh, you know we just append a block to our numbers dot each. Uh, we don't really have these stored in a variable of any sort, right? In this case, what we have with the proc is we're assigning it to a variable. So we do a proc dot new, and then we have the block right there, right? So now, how do we use this? Because we can't just do a, you know, num my numbers dot proc me or whatever. Well, we can do a proc dot call. So we can go ahead and run this. You can see right here, I'm a proc prints out because we did the proc dot call. Now, what happens if we want to do something with like arguments with a proc? Well, you don't have to use the def. You can just say proc me twice, proc dot new open up your block and then right here you can pass in your a and your b puts a plus b equals and then whatever you have right here so now if we were to uh, well i guess we can try and run this it's not going to work but we can try this you'll see it doesn't print out because we're not actually calling this proc me twice so we have to do the same thing we did before dot call but we have to pass in some numbers so we'll pass in two and three go ahead and run this we'll see a plus b equals five because two plus three equals five so that's that's that for the uh, proccing twice. And now let's take a look at something a little bit uh, more questionable. So let's say you have a proc. I'm going to call it uh, proc me like a hurricane. So you have a proc in here where you do a proc demo, which is equal to a proc dot new, which returns I'm a proc. You then have something in here that does a proc demo dot call. We can come down here and we can do puts proc me like a hurricane. We'll go ahead and we'll run this. So if we run this, uh, we can see right here, I'm a proc prints out. Uh, I'm just gonna say I'm a hurricane or something, right? Just so we have something looks a little bit different here. And maybe we can put a new line right here as well. Something like that. There we go. Okay, so we have I'm a hurricane printing out after we do the proc demo dot call inside of this uh, little block right here. And then we uh, we like print out this this block. What's interesting about this with a proc in particular is if you come in here and you do something like, I don't know, uh, puts um, a gentle breeze, 
if we now run this, you'll see that only I'm a hurricane prints out because this proc has a return in it. When this proc has a return in it and we call it right here, it's actually going to return from this entire block. So this is kind of like, this is kind of just a return statement right here. So it's actually returning the string. The string then gets put to here and then the, this gets put out, right? So what you can do if you have to do something like this, you could change this to like a puts. And now you can see I'm a hurricane, I'm a gentle breeze. Uh, we should actually change this to just a return. I'm a gentle breeze. And then you can see I'm a hurricane prince. I'm a gentle breeze prince because this gets returned to here. And then this puts prints out the string that gets returned. So it's just something to be aware of. If you do have a return right here, it's not gonna act how you would expect it to. So if you do, you'd wanna do something like puts in a hurricane, right? Something like that. Okay, so that takes care of that. That's basically all you need to know. Uh, the rest of it's kind of details you can learn along the way. It's just demystifying some of it or you might get tripped up. So let's say you have some lambdas. So you create some lambdas bread, you do a lambda, and then you have your block, and in your block you puts I'm a lambda. Again, just like with your procs, you're gonna do a dot call. We run this, you can see I'm a lambda. Cool. Now, what happens if we do something similar? So I'm gonna come right here, the def a method, say I won't be back. It'll have only I print inside of it. We'll call it, and then we'll have something here that gets returned. And I already spoiled it with the comment. Thanks a lot, GitHub Copilot. But now if I puts I won't be back, we can see that it's actually saying I lied, I'm back, which is the last thing in here. So in this case, with a Lambda specifically, this return isn't an issue. So if you ever run into that, it's probably because you're using like a proc instead of a Lambda, probably wanna fix that. All right, so now for some uh, controversial stuff, although most of the stuff I say is controversial, arrow functions. I think these technically are like called the stabby arrow notation or something. Uh, I absolutely despise that. I'd much rather just call it an arrow function. <laughs> so I'm gonna be calling it an arrow function. Uh, so the way these work, the syntax is a little weird, but we can walk through it. We'll have a Lambda demo is equal to arrow, and then you have your puts. So it says here, I'm a Lambda, right? We can go ahead, we can do a Lambda demo.call, and we'll see right here, I'm a Lambda prints out. Now with arguments, it's gonna be pretty similar to what you're used to. It's just gonna be something like this, where after the arrow, you have your parameters, puts, and then whatever you want. And then again, you can do uh, a lambda, oops, a lambda demo two dot call with two comma three, should give you an output of five, I guess. And we can see right here, a plus b equals five. So again, pretty similar. It's just a different type of notation. So when you see something in like a Rails model where they have those like shorthand notations like this for their their you know database queries or whatever, it's kind of all they're doing. It's just a lambda function. Uh, in a lot of cases, you can also just get away with like a regular you know method that you create in your model and you just call that. Uh, people just prefer the arrow notation sometimes. It's, I don't know, it, whatever works for everyone, right? But okay, uh, let's go to something else that you might run across, which is the collect method. Now this is basically just the same thing that we've covered before, but I think it's a good example and I've seen it used for this exact reason, so I think I'm gonna cover it as well. In here, what we can see is uh, we can do something like, let's do, puts numbers.collect. So numbers here is an array of numbers. So we call collect on this array. We can then say, all right, use the number as our iterator. And then we're gonna say printing the number and then we'll pass in the number. And for this, what I want to do is uh, make sure that this is actually printing what I want it to be printing. Uh, so if we run this, see right here, it's just printing the number right now. What we can do if we wanted to change the logic a bit, maybe we do times two, and then we can add this printing the number times two. Go ahead and run this. You can see two, four, six, eight, ten, right? Uh, just to match what we have up here for the collect method. So it's the same kind of concept. You have your uh, your array. You call dot collect on it, and then you can apply a block of code to uh, whatever your array is. You've probably seen something similar in like JavaScript land. 
Although don't tell the other Rails developers that you visit there because they'll get upset because, I don't know, JavaScript threatens, I don't know, whatever they do in their free time. Okay, anyways, ampersand notation. Don't really know what to call this aside from just uh, unnecessary confusion, but uh, you might occasionally come across this where you have an ampersand demo. It takes in an argument. The argument has an ampersand in front of it and it does block.call. Basically what this allows you to do is just pass in a block and then execute it inside of the, uh, the method, right? So you have ampersand demo, here's your block. If we come over here and we run this, you can see I'm the block prints out because this puts gets executed in here when it calls block.call. So yeah, if you ever see this notation, this is kind of just the idea behind it. So don't get too confused by it. It just means that they're passing in a block from somewhere and they're using it. Yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover here. I uh, just thought I'd step through some of the things that I've come across where I've had people ask questions about it. Uh, not necessarily from the code that I write in the videos, just because most of the code that I write avoids topics like, you know, Lambda functions, procs, and blocks. I guess not so much blocks, but uh, a lot of the nitty gritty stuff with our, you know, procedures and our, our Lambdas, I don't use a whole lot uh, just because I try and leave things accessible for like new developers. I personally can't stand it when I'm watching a tutorial in some new language and they just like throw something like this on the screen and I have no idea what it means and I don't know how to search for it. So I start searching for like hyphen greater than symbol notation in, I don't know, C++. Uh, and there's really not a lot of help there because the search engine treats the hyphen like I don't want to see the greater than symbol and it's like an exclusion operator. So then I have to wrap it in quotes. And by the time I'm done deciphering, how to actually search for the question that I have, uh, I've already given up and I know that I have a lot more patience for stupidity than new developers do. Uh, so in a lot of cases, new developers are just gonna see this and go, I don't know what that means, I'm leaving. Uh, so that's kind of why I don't cover this a whole lot, but uh, it does go to show that uh, these options are available, but they aren't necessary in a lot of cases. Uh, so don't feel like you have to use these or know how they work. It's of course something that can just come with experience as you come across more code that uses it. You might notice a pattern that ends up helping you uh, later down the line or something. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you found this interesting and helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.